Welcome to teachmeallow.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to change the rear brake shoes, drums, and wheel cylinders on this 1997 Ford F-150 4x4. That's right. Now, the problem that the owner had was when you get ready to go to work in the mornings, coming out the end of his driveway, you gently touch the brakes, and the rear passenger side wheel would lock up. Now, the problem with that could be several things. It could be a wheel cylinder that's going bad, or it could be a problem with moisture getting into the brake shoe, causing it to expand. And then as the brake shoe heats up, it dissipates moisture and you don't have any problems. But we're gonna replace all those today. Now we'll go over the tools that we used to do this job. The jack, two jack stands, and two wheel chocks. We have new rear brake shoes and two new rear brake drums. You can either buy new or you can have your old ones turned if there's enough material on them. Now we have our new rear wheel cylinders. Ours were bad, so we're going to have to replace these. Some dot three brake fluid, some brake parts cleaner, some high temperature caliper grease, anti-seize lubricant, thread lock, a 19 millimeter in socket and ratchet for the lug nuts, a half inch socket and ratchet for the wheel cylinder bolts, we have a combination 3 8 line wrench for the bleeder screw and the other end is 7 16 line wrench for the brake line. Here we have a backing plate and spring removal tool. It's easier to use than a pair of pliers. Some brake sp spring pliers. These come in very handy for installing and removing the old springs. A brake adjusting spoon for adjusting the brakes in and out, a standard fly hand screwdriver, a torque wrench with a half inch to three eighths adapter, we have a hammer, a brake bleeder kit, some safety glasses, shop towels, a shop lot, we have some penetrating oil, a rubber mallet, a drain pan to catch the brake fluid when we take loose the brake line, and here we went ahead and bought brake, new brake hardware. Now we put the wheel chocks in front of the front tires, we use our flat screwdriver to remove the center caps on each wheel. We're going to loosen up the lugs on the rear wheels by turning it to a half to a quarter of a turn. Once we have all the lugs loosened on one side, we'll move to the other side and do the exact same thing. Once all the lugs are loosened, we'll go ahead and raise the vehicle up. And here we raise the vehicle up by placing the jack under the rear differential. Always refer to the owner's manual and observe proper jacking positions. Once the vehicle is off the ground, we'll go ahead and install our jack stands. Never crawl under a vehicle that's not supported by jack stands. Then we're going to go ahead and remove all the lug nuts, then we'll remove the tires and rims. Here we're putting the lug nuts in the center cap just for safekeeping. Slide the tire off, place the center cap on top of the tire wheel, and slide up under the vehicle. This is for safety and for safekeeping. Then we move to the other side and do the exact same thing. Now we're going to spray a little penetrating oil around the axle here, so we can help to get the drum off easily. Now we're slightly, lightly hitting the 
drum in between the wheel studs. Make sure you don't hit the wheel studs. Let me pull the drum off. If the drum does not want to come off because the shoes are holding it, you need to remove this plug on the back of the backing plate. And you can use a screwdriver and your brake adjusting spoon to turn the brake adjuster. If you turn the brake adjuster up, pushing the spoon down, you'll be able to turn the um, brake shoes in and be able to remove the rotor easily. Now we're using our brake spring pliers, the end, and we'll remove the springs holding the shoes in place. And then we're going to remove the shoe hold down springs using our backing plate removal tool. It may be useful to hold the pin from the back side with one hand where you remove, remove the washers holding, down, holding the backing plate, backing plate springs in place. And then we're going to just remove all the hardware from the shoes in here. We're going to remove the uh, parking brake lever using a flathead screwdriver to remove this clip. Once the clip's removed, you can remove the lever from the shoe. Then remove the anchor pin guide plate and the pins that hold on the shoes. We're going to replace these. We're going to slide a pan under the brake line and we're going to loosen up the brake line with our 7 16 line wrench. As you're loosening up the brake line, there's no need to pull it out of the wheel cylinder as this could bend your brake line. Once the brake line is loose, we're going to remove the two bolts holding the wheel cylinder into place with our half inch ratchet and socket. With both bolts removed, you can remove the wheel cylinder. It may be a little stuck and we actually had to use a screwdriver. The prior is loose. Just make sure your brake line is completely loose from the back before doing this. Now, notice the wheel cylinders, there's a, there's a left and a right. Make sure you get the right ones. Then we're going to need to transfer these push rods from the old wheel cylinder to the new one. And we're going to use a little brake parts cleaner to clean them up a little bit before we install them. Then we slide the push rods into the new wheel cylinder. You need to remove the cover, the rubber cover that's covering where the brake line goes into the wheel cylinder. Slide the wheel cylinder into place, making sure you line up the brake line on the back before you put the bolts in. This is easier to go ahead and line the brake line up without damaging or bending the brake line. Once you get the brake line started, you can go ahead and bolt your wheel cylinder into place. Then we're going to tighten up the wheel cylinder using our half inch socket and ratchet.
with the wheel cylinder tightened down, we're going to go ahead and tighten up the brake line. And then we're going to torque the wheel cylinder bolts to 19 foot-pounds unless otherwise specified. I'm going to show you the old hardware and the new hardware that came with our new hardware kit. Here we have the backing plate pins to hold the shoes on. Here's our new springs. Here's our backing plate springs. We just compare and make sure we get the right parts. Here's new dust covers. New pins for the brake for the um, emergency brake, and then we got the adjusting springs and the primary and secondary springs and this is the hardware we want to reuse we didn't get new hardware for this now we're going to compare our old and new brake shoes here you can tell which brake shoe goes to the rear as you see the lining comes up farther on the rear brake shoe Now you'll notice that we have a pin in the bottom of the old brake shoes. The new brake shoes will come with this pin, but it's not installed. So before we install these brakes, we'll need to install these pins. Make sure you install this pin on the rear brake shoe. We use a hammer to tap it into place. Make sure you get this pin completely seated. As you can see, a little bit comes to the back side. Now we're going to use our brake parts cleaner and clean off the backing plate. And you'll notice there's points on the backing plate where the brake shoes will ride against. You need to make sure these are clean. There are three on each side. Then we're going to apply some high temperature caliper grease to these points on the backing plate. Make sure you get this bottom one. It's a little harder to see. And then we're going to get ready to install our emergency brake lever onto the brake shoes. Put this washer on exactly how we did it here. Remember this is the rear brake shoe we're, we're doing this to. Slide the rear brake shoe over the pin. This is the one with the more material on the shoe. And then we slide the pin in, the clip into place. And we'll use a, pair, use a pair of pliers. To kind of pinch the, the clip in, in a little bit so it won't come off. Then we're going to slide these new pins into place that came with our hardware kit. We're going to get our shoe hold down springs into place. We'll slide our shoe up, slide the pin into position. Make sure you get your brake shoe lined up with the push rod. Now, put your shoe hold down spring in place over the pin using our backing plate spring tool. We'll push the washer into place over the pin, twist it. Make sure you're at a 90 degree. Then we're going to move to the other side. Position this shoe, slide the pin through. Slide our spring into position. Using our tool. So 
down, spin it. Make sure the pin's at a 90 degree angle with the washer. Then we slide our anchor pin guide plate over the anchor pin. I slide the brake shoe adjusting lever cable over the anchor pin. Position the cable guide. Run the cable over the guide. Then we're going to install our secondary return spring. This will hold the guide into position. Using our brake spring pliers, we'll pull and replace your spring over the anchor pin. Make sure the anchor pin guide plate is pushed back as far as it can on the anchor pin. Now, on the front shoe, we'll line up the push rod and the brake cylinder. Now we'll get ready to install our parking brake link. So make sure you put the parking brake link spring and the retainer into position. Make sure the link is properly engaged with the parking brake lever and the front shoe. Now we're going to install our primary return spring. Here, instead of using our brake spring pliers, we went ahead and showed you how you could use a screwdriver to do this. Make sure everything's installed correctly. Make sure the shoes are seated correctly. Make sure the push rods are in the shoes correctly. Once everything is seated correctly, we're going to move down to the bottom. Then we're going to install the adjusting lever spring. Make sure the hooked end is facing forward. Then we're going to install the brake shoe adjusting lever. Hook the brake shoe adjusting lever cable over the adjusting lever. And also hook the end of the adjusting lever spring over the adjusting lever. Then we're going to attach the short end of the lower shoe retracting spring to the front shoe. Now make sure you run this spring behind the adjusting cable. Now we're going to hook the spring into the rear shoe. Now we're going to prepare our star wheel self adjuster. We're going to apply a little anti-seize lubricant to the threads. To make sure it spins easily. We're also going to apply a little anti lubricant to this end. This is just so it works the best it can. So now we're going to slide the adjusting wheel into place. This is how it should look when it's all done. Just go over and make sure all the springs are seated properly. Make sure the shoes are in there correctly. Then we're going to get ready to install the rear drum. We spray it down with some brake parts cleaner. And we'll slide it into place over your new shoes. Then we're going to move to the other side, spray our bench running oil, use our hammer, gently tap it, remove the drum, remove the springs. Move all the hardware.
Move our emergency brake lever. Get ready to remove the the wheel cylinder. So we position our drain pan. We loosen up our brake line. Once the brake line is loose, we're going to go ahead and remove the bolts holding the wheel cylinder into position. With our bolts removed, remove our wheel cylinder. Again, we had to pry it loose with our screwdriver. Then we're going to clean up the push rods. Install them into our new wheel cylinder. Slide the wheel cylinder into place. Make sure you remove the rubber cover where the brake line attaches. Attach our brake line. Install our bolts. Tighten up the bolts with our half inch socket and ratchet. torque the bolts to 19 foot-pounds unless otherwise specified. Make sure your brake line is tight. Then we're going to clean off the backing plate. Making sure to clean these spots good. Now apply our high temp caliper grease. Then we're going to compare our brake shoes. Note, more material here is on the rear pad than on the front. We need to install our pin in the rear shoe. Make sure it's properly seated. Install this washer on the adjusting lever. Install it just like we showed you. Slide it into the rear brake shoe. Install the clip. And pinch the clip closed with our pliers. Then we're going to install these pins and this retaining springs. Make sure it's at 90 degrees, the pin and the tanning washer. Now we install the front, the front shoe. 
bottom of the pan. Slide the spring into place. Put the retaining washer inside the tool. You want to put your hand behind the pan. Turn and turn to 90 degrees. Install our guide plate over the anchor pan. Install our adjusting cable. Install the cable guide. Install our secondary return spring. Install it using our brake spring pliers. Push the guide plate back into position. Route our adjusting cable over the guide plate. Then we're getting ready to install our parking brake link. Make sure the spring and retainer are installed correctly. Slide this into the brake shoes. Make sure your push rods are lined up. Now we're going to install the primary return spring. Here we're going to use our brake spring pliers to slide the spring into place. Install our adjusting lever spring. Then we'll install our adjusting lever. Install our adjusting cable onto the adjusting lever. Now we're going to install our lower retracting spring. Hook the small end into the front shoe. Make sure you run behind the adjusting cable. Install the other end into the rear brake shoe. And make sure the adjusting lever spring is installed over the adjusting lever although we didn't have a good shot of this step. Then we're going to prepare the self-adjuster. We're going to apply some anti-seize lubricant to the threads. And apply some on this end, the other end of the self-adjuster. Then we're going to slide the adjuster into place. We're going to clean the new brake drum. And slide it over the shoes. Now we're going to bleed the brakes. So we pop the hood. We check the brake fluid. Add until we reach the max line. We can go to the passenger side, it's the farthest from the master cylinder. Remove the dust cover, install our wrench, install our brake bleeder kit. Have your partner inside the vehicle depress and hold the brake pedal. Open up the bleeder screw. There's no fluid coming through it yet, so we go close the bleeder screw. Partner, release the brake pedal, have them depress it again. Open up the bleeder screw. Keep doing this until you see fluid coming through the, the line for the bleeder kit. And keep doing it also until there's no air bubbles in the brake line. 
Never release the brake pedal with the bleeder screw open as you can introduce air into the brake lines. As you notice there's still air, air in the lines, so we'll keep doing this process. When you see no more air bubbles in the brake line, we'll close the bleeder screw, remove the bleeder kit, reinstall our dust cover, check and add brake fluid as necessary, and we're going to move to the other side. Move the dust cover, install your wrench, and we couldn't use our line wrench on this, the 3H line wrench, so we had to use a 3H opening wrench. Have your partner depress the brake pedal, open the bleeder screw, tighten up the bleeder screw, have your partner release the brake pedal, and keep doing this process until there's no more air in the line of the bleeder kit. When there's no more air in the line, tighten up your bleeder screw, remove your bleeder kit, reinstall your dust cover. Again, check and add fluid as necessary. Now we're going to adjust our drums. First, we turn the adjuster to where the shoes will barely drag on the drums as the drums are turned. Now we're going to remove the drum and turn in the shoes until the drums no longer drag. Now we move to the other side. Move the drum, adjust the shoes out, We install the drum to see if it drags. And we remove the drum and turn the shoes in until the drum no longer drags. Slide the drum back on, check and make sure it doesn't drag. Make sure we have our dust covers installed. Slide our tires and wheels into place. Install the lug nuts. Snug them down using our 19 millimeter socket and ratchet. Of 
move to the other side. Slide your tire and wheel into place. Install your lug nuts. Snug them down with your 19 millimeter socket and ratchet. With all the lugs snug down, we're going to go ahead and raise the vehicle up and remove our jack stands. Jack, with the jack stands removed, we're going to lower the vehicle onto the ground. And we're going to torque our lug nuts to 100 foot pounds unless otherwise specified. And we do this in a crisscross pattern. We're going to move to the other side, torque the lug nuts, always make sure you torque in a crisscross pattern. Then we're going to install the center caps. We're going to move our wheel chocks. Well, we hope this video will help you change the brake drums, the brake shoes, and the wheel cylinders on your 1997 Ford F-150 4x4. Send any comments you may have to comment at teachmeall.com. And as always, thank you for visiting teachmeall.com and have a great day.